And for the moment, we've all been waiting for to actually create our Game Boy game using GB Studio. Uh, at this point in time, we have our caveman created, our dinosaur. Uh, we have our level map done, and we have an intro screen and a game over screen. Pretty sweet. Uh, so once GB Studio is open, you're at a screen like this, and we're going to select New. And you'll notice here we have different options to choose from in here. They do have some pre-built assets that you can use. And, you know, you can use that to kind of see what's available for the game. But this one we're going to make from scratch uh, just, you know, because I haven't seen a lot of tutorials that show how to do that. So for the project name, and it's going to put this wherever I tell it to. So, uh, you know, I might actually go here and select my... Uh, desktop and I might put this in my prehistorio assets folder and then maybe I will make uh, one more folder in there and call this one prehistorio then I'll select that folder and that's where it's going to be uh, stored in and then for the project to name let's call it prehistorio and out of these three options, like I said, I want to go blank project and create. So I get that done. We now have this GB Studio layout here. Uh, so on the left hand side, we have this panel for scenes. We have scripts, which we can add, and then we have variables. Pretty cool. And then on the right hand side, we have like our attributes for whatever we have selected. So on this one here for the author. We can put our name there. I'm going to leave this where it says enable color mode unchecked. All right, and then uh, for the rest of this movement speed one, I think is fine. And animation speed is, is set to four, I think is fine for right now in here. So if I click this plus and I find a scene and I move my cursor here, it's, you know, this is kind of like just a, Tabletop. If I click it here, there's my scene one. And then if I go here and I add another scene, and then I'll add one more scene, this one will be down here at the bottom. All right, so when I click on these, you can see how this information changes. So when I select scene one, it says, What type is it? It's a top down 2D. I actually am just going to select platformer for all three of these. Then we want to change the backgrounds for these scenes so we can actually see what's going on on these levels. So the way we can do that is we go up here, this drop down menu, and we're looking for where it says backgrounds. And they give us a placeholder in there to look at, um, but what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our game over the PNG file. I'm just going to click and drag it right there. You'll see it shows up up there. And then I'm going to bring over my Prehistorio intro screen right there. And then I'm also going to bring in my project that I called level one. See, that's our level map that we created. Now we can go back here to Game World, and we have these screens. So when I go here to Scene 1, and up here where it says Background, I can click on this, and I can select my intro. And then we have that screen there. And we go to Scene 2, and this is where the game is actually going to be played. And I'll go up here to Background, and I'll select level one and we have a level one right there then we'll go down here to scene three and we'll select this and we have our game over so these are all set up and you can use control in your mouse wheel to kind of zoom in and zoom out as you as you scroll with that action and Again, just like using our tiled program, if we hold down the mouse wheel and click and drag, you can pan. So it makes it a little bit easier to navigate through there. The other thing we can do here is if we go to scene one, 
we can actually select up here at the top and we could type in intro and then for scene two we can call this one level one and then for scene three we can call this one um, game over when we run this program and it takes a second for it to work at first All right, we see a few things on the screen. One of them, we see this arrow, which we don't want there. And that's our, our player one actor sprite. Uh, and then we have this screen, and we can't really do anything. We're just stuck on the screen. So we can't have that. Otherwise, our game's not going to be very fun to just look at a picture of Prehistorio and a dinosaur. So I'll close out of that. And now we're ready for a little bit of scripting on here. So on the right hand side, uh, we have all of these, when I have this selected, we have these different options in here. One of the things on this is I can add an event, and this is on, like on initial, like it, this is going to load up right away. So what do I want to have happen right away? Well, uh, one of the things is, is I want to hide this actor uh, sprite sheet. So I'm going to type in player. And see what we have available. All right, and I'm not seeing what I want, so I can also go here to actor. And here we go, we have deactivate actor. I'm going to click on that, and that's going to hide our arrow. So when I click save and I run this program, I just see the screen on there. So mission one accomplished. Now, what I need is a way to go from my intro to my level one. But if I go to add event, and in here we have input, and then I can select attach script to button, and then underneath it, it says on press. So here I can select what button I want to press. So I set on the directions I want to select start. So you should probably do that. So I'm going to select on start here. I'm going to remove the letter B off of that. Uh, on this, you can select you know, a direction or these or a combination of them. And I'm going to remove override default button action. And then on press, what is going to happen? So I'll click on this. And then I want to change scene. And that one happens to be up here at the top. Or if it's not showing up on yours for some reason, you can go down to scene and find it. For me, once you play around with this a little bit, you kind of remember what things are called. So I'll just... I can type in scene on here, and then it's like, oh, okay, change scene. So I'll select that, and what am I going to do? Well, I want to change it to a different scene, and I want to select it to level one. Once I do that, you can see there is like a dotted blue line on here that takes us over to the screen. All right, so now I'm going to go file, save, and I'm going to run this program here. And I have my screen here, and then the directions for Prehistorio that I know of. Uh, you have Z and X, which are like your A and B buttons. You have your direction pad, which is your directions. And then you have Enter, which is Start. So if I press Start, we now see our level on here. And if I move my keypads, you can see where this is moving the arrow around. and, and Things are kind of starting to work well here. So I'm going to close out of that. And over here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this because it'll make it easier. Uh, we have these uh, adding options. And one of them here is a collision. So if I click on collision, uh, there's these different palettes up here to use. And because of the way we resized our image and we made it in a tile editor, these will all align up with everything that we made uh, on, our, on our game. So the one I'm going to use for the ground here is going to be the solid. All right, so I'm going to just click and drag. 
and we have that set. Now, our character will not move any further than where the edge of the screen is. So you don't have to worry about, like, if you've made a game using construct, you don't have to have it bound to layout or anything. Your character already is. If I wanted to use the same uh, solid object here, this solid one, if I wanted to use it up here, I could, but then the character would just hit their head. I would have to jump on it from the side. So what we can do is we can go collision top. I'm going to go file and save. And I'm going to run this program again. Press enter. All right. And so because we started up there at the very top, we landed here, which is where the collision is. But if I go down here and then I jump up here, now I'm on top of it. Now, just to kind of show you how this will work. Otherwise, if I'm down here and I jump up, because that ground is solid all the way around, I can't jump up any further. One other thing I might actually even do is go back to collision. And I think I am going to also just kind of put this along the line of, oops, along the line of these cliffs. All right, so with this here, now we want to modify the shape of this actor on here. So to do that, we'll go up here to the drop down menu and we will go to sprites. All right, and when I go in here to the sprites, uh, it gives us this basic uh, sprites up here. And then for each sprite, uh, we have these little animations that go along with it. Okay, so what we want to do here is we want to create our caveman. We'll We'll start with our caveman here. So if I click and drag my caveman up here, it's going to bring my caveman up here to the top. And if I select caveman sheet, you'll see up here, uh, we have these different shapes. Uh, we have one up here, and then we have these little frames down here, or our tiles here, and then we have our little frames down at the bottom. Now we can select these and erase those. And for idle right, I want the one where he has both feet to the ground. So I'm gonna click and drag in those squares, and then if I bring my cursor up here, then I can just click, and that's where the caveman is. And the other thing I should do also uh, with this character is when I, when I have it selected, uh, I need to go over here to animation type, and I do not want uh, four directions. I want to select platform player. All right. And then up here it says flip right to create left facing frames. So that's good. I do want that on there. I want that checked. Okay. And now I'm back here to my animation again. So that's idle right. Now, if I go to moving right, I can select that. And then now we have these frames. So the first thing I want to do is click and drag my middle caveman and bring this up here and click. I'm going to make another frame. Go to my second one here, or my third one, second animation, and click right there. All right, so there is the animation for our caveman. Now, if I wanted to jump right, and I can go up here and I'm going to select these sides and erase them. And I'm going to select this animation down here. And that's what he's going to use when he jumps. And now I can go here to uh, my dino sheet, click and drag and bring it in here. And now we have dino sheet. So if I select on dino sheet here, and make sure that this one is platform player. And then the same kind of thing. I'm going to go to idle right. 
And I'm going to remove these frames up here, and then I'm going to select these two frames with the dinosaur and just click right up there. And then if I go to moving right, select those, move my cursor up here, and then click. And then add a frame. Same thing with the last element on there. And this character is not going to jump, so you don't really need to worry about it. The dinosaur is good. We have that on here. Everything looks all right. And so we'll save again. And then we'll go up here to sprites and go back to our game world. Okay, now let's run this program and see how things are looking. Oh, so we still have the arrow here. And rookie mistake on this. Uh, just like I changed the level over here, I need to go over here to player sprite sheet and I need to switch it to caveman. There we go. Now when I go file and save and run this program. Okay, and we have our caveman. When he jumps, he's like that. When he's standing there, when he moves the other way, everything looks good. So when we are ready to uh, position this caveman sprite, we can go here on to initial again, and we'll add an event. And I will search on here for actor, and where it says set actor position. I click on that, then I have my options to choose. So I'm gonna select my caveman right here. And then in this little X and Y position, Kind of move this to where I need to. All right. We'll give this one a try. Two by 13. Profile save, and I'm going to run script. Press start. And here we have our caveman starting where the caveman to start. Pretty cool. Oh, now let's say, uh, you know, we have this character. We want to obviously get to the end point, which is going to be this door. All right. Uh, so the way that this is going to work is we'll go here and add another object. And this is going to be a trigger. Okay, so if I select trigger, and if I click and drag here, then I have this trigger area on this. All right, and then on here it says on enter, what do we want to have happen with trigger one? Uh, so I can click add event, and then I am going to change scene. All right, and then automatically here, it's telling me, oh, do you want to switch to game over? So by default, mine says that. If yours doesn't, we just want to kind of go there to game over. And then that takes us there. And then if we wanted to play our game again, or obviously the more levels you make, you would have this go to the next level and so forth. But for our demo, we're just having it go to the game over. And then once we get down here to the game over, we're going to... I uh, do one of these add add a event and we're looking for here we go attach script to button and then just like we did above we're going to select start and then we're going to add a change scene and then we're going to have it go back to the intro screen all right, so now we can go here, file save, and let's test this out and see how this works. So we'll press return. We have our character here. And here we go, we win the game. All right, so game over. We, we do have this arrow showing on there again. So another thing we had to do with this game over trigger is by selecting this level and going on 
in it and we'll select on this and we'll go actor and we'll find deactivate actor. Okay, so you can see it's a lot of troubleshooting. A lot of things might not show up the way you think they do and then just finding a way to solve those problems. Jumping over here, now it takes us back to game over. Press enter. And that's not working. So let's look back over here and see what's going on with this level here. So, um, Oh, okay. So over here where we have this on button press, uh, once we go into this, we actually want to, should be able to select this down arrow here. And then we can go delete event. And so what I did here was I accidentally added that script to this trigger here, but I didn't add it to the game over screen. So if I go to game over, now, if I go on here and I search for button, attach script to button, and go start and change scene, go to intro, right default. Then we can go file, save, and now, for real this time, it should be working. So we have character here. To the end game over screen press return prehistorio takes us to the beginning press start and then our game is working again all right so congratulations we beat the game uh, but a game isn't fun unless we have some obstacles so the first obvious obstacle just by looking at the map would be these holes that you can fall down uh, so we'll go back up here to trigger. And with each of these triggers, you're allowed a certain number of these. So what I have been playing around with is I've just been selecting trigger. And then I'm selecting here. And then I'm just clicking and dragging all the way to the end. Now, I don't know if this has any effect like on the size of the trigger. But to me, this is just one trigger here. So when I land, it doesn't matter if I land here or on this one or on this one, it's all gonna do the same thing. So in my mind, it's going to be less that the game has to do to calculate, allowing it uh, to run a little bit better. Uh, so here's this trigger here and it, up here it says on enter. So I'm gonna add events and I'm gonna go here to actor deactivate uh, so it hides and then i'm going to add another event and this one is going to be change scene and it's going to go to game over okay so if i go to file and save and i try this program fall down here takes me to game over and here's Prehistorio. So, you know, I probably should have had like a game over and a you win, you know, but we're just kind of trying to play around with this to get something to at least get you started to where you can continue making the game how you want it. So that looks pretty good. Uh, the second real obvious obstacle our, our character should face should be an enemy, right? So... Uh, for this, we can go to add, and we want to add an actor. Okay, so once we do that, we get this little screen here. So I am going to place actor right there. And this actor, one for the speed, four for the animation, that's fine. And I want to give it a collision group. So all of these we want... And they're going to be the same type of enemy. So all of my enemies on this level I'm going to make are collision group one. All right. And so I think that looks pretty good. You can choose what direction it's it's facing on here. And then for the actor, if I click on this, 
I can find my dino sheet. So my dinosaur is set there. That looks good. Then I can go file and save. Let's make sure that it's showing up on here. And it is. It's not doing anything, but, but it's showing up where it's supposed to be showing up. Okay. So now what we want is uh, to add some uh, scripting here to where if we run into the dinosaur, you know, then it's a game over for us. And then we are going to go on hit. So with on hit, I'm going to say on hit with player. So if actor relative to actor. So I'll click on this. And then here it says if our player is above the dinosaur. So what is going to happen in this case when the dinosaur is hit and the player is above? All right, so then uh, what we can do is we could add event. We could select player and player bounce. So when we land on the dinosaur, the player bounces. Do we want it to be medium, high, or low? It's kind of up to you on, on how you want that to work. I'll try high to start with. And then after that, I'm going to add an event. And we're going to go actor, deactivate actor. And so on here, it shows us this dinosaur with that. Okay, so I'm going to click Save on here. So again, so that looks pretty good. Um, you just see a little bounce on there, and then the dinosaur disappeared. Uh, if you wanted to, you could make kind of like an animation with that or whatever. I, for what we're doing, I think this works good to get us started. And... We need something to happen. What if we touch the dinosaur, but we're not above it? In other words, what if the dinosaur runs into us from the side? So down here on else, then what we would want to do is we would want to go to player or actor. Sorry, we would go to actor deactivate. And out of the drop down menu, we would select the player, add an event. And we would change the scene, and then we would go back to game over. Oh, so I just want to take this uh, deactivate layer and bring it in here into the L screen. There we go. Okay, so now we'll save this. And we'll try to play this one more time. So we jump on it. That worked. Okay. What happens if we run into them? All right, and that worked. All right, so there is our dinosaur. What happens when the dinosaur is hit and that comes into play right there. So that looks pretty good. Uh, the dinosaur just sti just sitting there takes away a little bit of the fun element out of it, I think. So now what we can do is we can go over here onto on update. And we're going to look in here to add event. And then we will find actor. And we are looking for actor movement. Uh, one of these I think is, let's see, relative, actor move relative, that's what we, so if I select on this, I have the dinosaur on there, and then you can choose what direction to move this this creature. So I'm going to have this one move horizontal. And then I'm going to go like three tiles. 
laterally three tiles. And then we can actually click up here and then we can copy event. Go up here and then we can go paste event. Paste event after. And then this one, we will go negative three. All right, so uh, if I run this program now and look at this, we have our dinosaur moving back and forth on there. Um, and then it might be kind of cool, actually, if we had another event and we said wait. In 0.5 seconds, let's give that a try. And move that in between there. And let's see what that does. That's not too bad. So maybe one other thing I might try is what if I switch this up here to negative three and then switch this one to three. All right, that looks pretty good. So then you're not really, it just gives a little hesitation there and makes the game a little more challenging. Jump on it. Um, and then if we run into it, it still takes us out. Okay, good. Okay, so once we have that there, then we could take this dinosaur and go Control C. And then control V and it asks us where we want to put this dinosaur. And then maybe we'll go control V one more time. Dinosaur over here. Let's see how things are looking. Sorry, he forgot about him right there. Okay, so we have this dinosaur taken down. Dinosaurs kind of move like that. And I think when they're off the screen, they stop. Just You can have them continue to move when you're off the screen with this little check mark up here. There it is. It doesn't seem like it's too glitchy, like if I go over these characters, just trying to see what would happen. I don't really notice too much of a slowdown at all. A few things with the hitboxes on there, but again, that might be just from uh, the shape of my characters and all that also. But there is our actual game. Uh, you know, you can play around with this and and kind of see what you can create with that. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show how to import music to this. And then after that, we'll kind of show how you can publish this game and, and see how it all looks when it's all finished.